at the end of the ninth year. By Ray Bradbury. Well, said Sheila, chewing on her breakfast toast and examining her complexion, distorted in the side of the coffee urn. Here it is, the last day of the last month of the ninth year. Her husband, Thomas, glanced over the rampart of the Wall Street Journal, saw nothing to pass in his regard, and sank back in place. What? I said the ninth year's finished, and you have a completely new wife. Or, to put it properly, the old wife's gone, so I don't think we're married anymore. Thomas floored the journal on his as-yet-untouched scrambled eggs, tilted his head this way and that, and said, Not married? Nope. There was another time, another body, another me. She buttered more toast and munched on it philosophically. Hold on. He took a stiff jolt of coffee. Explain. Well, dear Thomas, don't you remember reading as children, and, art and later, that every nine years, I think it was nine, the body, churning like a gene chromosome factory, did your entire person over, fingernails, spleen, ankles to elbows, belly, bum and earlobes, molecule by molecule... Oh, get to it. The point, wife, the point. The point, dear Tom, is that with this breakfast I have replenished my soul and psyche, completed the reworking of my entire flesh, blood and bones. This person seated across from you is not the woman you married. I've often said that. Be serious. Are you? Let me finish. If the medical research is true, then at the end of nine years, there is not an eyebrow, eyelash, pore, dimple, or skin follicle in this creature here at this celebratory breakfast that in any way is related to that old Sheila Tompkins, married at 11 a.m. of a Saturday, nine years ago, this very hour. Two different women... One in bondage to a nice male creature whose jaw jumps out like a cash register when he scans the journal. The other, now that it is one minute after the deadline hour, born free. So. She rose swiftly and prepared to flee. Wait! He gave himself another jolt of coffee. Where are you going? Halfway to the door, she said. Out. Perhaps away. And who knows, forever. Born free? Honch. Come here, sit down. She hesitated as he assumed his lion tamer's voice. Damn it! You owe me an explanation. Sit. She turned slowly. For only as long as it takes to draw a picture. Draw it then. Sit. She came to stare at her plate. I seem to have eaten everything in sight. He jumped up, ran over to the side table, rummaged more omelette and banged it in front of her. There! Speak with your mouth full. She forked in the eggs. You do see what I'm driving at, don't you, Tomasino? Damnation! I thought you were happy. Yes, but not, not incredibly happy. That's for maniacs on their honeymoons. Yes, wasn't it? That was then. This is now. Well? I could feel it happening all year. Lying in bed, I felt my skin prickle. My pores open like 10,000 tiny mouths. My perspiration run like faucets. My heart race. My pulse sound in the oddest places. Under my chin, my wrists, the backs of my knees, my ankles. I felt like a huge wax statue melting. After midnight, I was afraid to turn on the bathroom light and find a stranger gone mad in the mirror. All oh, right, all right. He stored, stirred four sugars into his coffee and drank the slops from the saucer. Sum it up. Every hour of every night, and then all day, I could feel it as if I was out in a storm being struck by hot August rain that washed away the old to find a brand new me. Every drop of serum, every red and white corpuscle, every hot flash of nerve ending, rewired and restrung. New marrow, new hair for combing, new fingerprints even. Don't look at me like that. Perhaps no new fingerprints. But still the rest, see? Am I not a fresh sculpted, fresh painted work of God's creation? He searched her up and down with a razor glare. I hear mad Carlotta maundering. I see a woman hyperventilated by the midlife frenzy. Why don't you just say it? Do you want a divorce? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. I'll just simply go away. Where will you go? There must be some place, 
she said vaguely, stirring her omelette to make pods. Is there another man? He said at last, holding his utensils with fists. Not quite yet. Thank God for small favors. Thank God for small favors. <laughs> now go to your room. Pick pardon. You'll not be allowed out for the rest of the week. Go to your room. No phone calls. No TV. No. You sound like my father in high school. <laughs> I'll be damned. Yes, upstairs now. No lunch for you, my girl. I'll put a plate by your door at supper time. When you behave, I'll give you your car keys. Meanwhile, march. Pull out your telephone plugs and hand over your CD player. This is outrageous. I'm a grown woman. Ingrown? No progress. Regress. If that damn theory's true, you didn't add on, just sank back nine years. Out you go. Up. She ran, pale-faced, to the entry stairs, wiping tears from her eyes. As she was halfway up, he, putting his foot on the first step, pulled the napkin from his shirt and called quietly. Wait. She froze in place, but did not look back down at him, waiting. Sheila, he said at last, tears running down his cheeks now. Yes. I love you. I know, but it doesn't help. Yes, it does. Listen. She waited, halfway up to her room. He rubbed his hand over his face, as if trying to massage some truth out of it. His hand was almost frantic, searching for something hidden around his mouth or near his eyes. Then it burst from him. Sheila! I'm supposed to go to my room. Don't! What then? His face began to relax, his eyes to fix on a solution, as his hand rested on the banister, leading up to where she stood with her back turned. If what you say is true... It is! Every cell, every pore, every eyelash... Nine years. Yes, yes, I, I know, yes. But listen. He swallowed hard, and that helped him digest the solution, which he now spoke very weakly, then quietly, and then with a kind of growing certainty. If what you say happened... It did. Well, then, it happened to me, too. What? It doesn't just happen to one person, right? It happens to all people, everyone in the world. And if that's true, well... My body has been changing along with yours during all the last nine years. Every follicle, every fingernail, all the dermis and epidermis or whatever. I never noticed, but it must have. Her head was up now, and her back was not slumped. He hurried on. And if that's true, good lord that I'm new too. The old Tom, Thomas, Tommy, Tomasino is left back there with the shed snakeskin. Her eyes opened, and she listened, and he finished. So we're both brand new. You're the new, beautiful woman I've been thinking about founding and loving in the last year. And I'm that man that you were heading out to search for. Isn't that right? Isn't that true? There was the merest hesitation, and then she gave the smallest, most imperceptible nod. Mercy. <laughs> That's not my name. It is now. New woman, new body, new name. So I picked one for you. Mercy. What does that make you? Let me think. How about Frank? Frankly, my dear, I do give a damn. Frank. Frank and Mercy. Mercy and Frank. Doesn't exactly ring, but it'll do. Mercy? Yes? Will you marry me? What? I said, will you marry me? Today. An hour from now. Noon. She turned at last to look down at him, with a face all freshly tanned and washed. Oh, yes. And we'll run away again, and be maniacs for a little while. No, here's fine. Here's wonderful. Come down, then. We've another nine years before another change. Come down and finish your wedding breakfast. Mercy? She came down the steps and took his hand and smiled. Where's the champagne, she said. <laughs>